So you bought yourself an old Jag because you're a granddad who likes drinking tea and pictures of the Queen, but the base in your car just isn't enough. Well, fortunately for you, today we're going to be installing that in an old Jag and show you how you can do it yourself. So when you know you want to install a sub, the next question is how do you do it? You can build a box yourself or of course buy a pre-existing one and have it done for you. The first means you can spec it to the exact subwoofers you want, make it fit your car and make it look epic. The other option, buying a pre-made one, is obviously quicker and easier, but as a wise man once said, nothing worth doing is easy, unless of course it's listening to your sub after it's made, which is easy and worth doing. But assuming you want to make it yourself, it's time to choose your components. You'll need subwoofers. These typically come in sizes 8 to 12 inch. And as a general rule of thumb, smaller is punchier and larger is louder and able to hit lower. Your decision will ultimately boil down to the cost, the space you're willing to sacrifice in your boot, and how much space you want or need, I should say, as base is obviously a necessity. Next, you'll need an amp. This provides the power to your subs to make it go boom. Now your subwoofers will come with a power rating, but be careful here. When they say extreme peak power of 1500 watts, ignore it, it's marketing magic, and it means nothing in this context. What you want is the RMS rating. That's the power it's going to draw most of the time. So your amp also needs to have an RMS rating to match the subwoofers. In my case, I had two 8-inch subs each putting 250 watts, so I went for an amp that can deliver 500 watts. So I just doubled it. It's that simple. Other factors to take on board are how are you connecting your source or music into the subs. Aftermarket head units tend to have a subwoofer out port you can run to the amp. Old Jags from 2008 do not. That's why I made sure my amp had a high power input line which means I can splice into the existing cables from the rear speakers and use that to run the music into the amp. But don't despair if the one you want doesn't. You can pick these up as little external boxes for not very much money. I went for a Rockford Fosgate R2 500X1 because the name sounded cool, but also it matched the subwoofers, it's small, easy to conceal, and also included lights to help with setting the game when you're all set and done. Finally, you'll also need cables for power and ground. You need to work out the thickness you acquire by working out the number of amps, as in current, your amp is going to pull, and then find your cable using a lookup table. Basically, the more power hungry your setup, the thicker the cable. In my case, a 500 watt amp running off 12 volts means 41 amps. But car amps aren't 100% efficient, normally around 85%, so let's round that to 50 to play it safe. So I go to my table, see how many amps I've got, so in the 50 to 65, and go to the length I need, which is about 6 meters or 20 human feet if you're American. From that we see I need 4 gauge wire. You'll also want some speaker wire, which is typically 12 to 16 gauge, and a cable for your remote turn on. My amp doesn't actually need this because using those high input connections we talked about, it can do it for you, which keeps things even more simple. Alright, so whilst waiting for all of that to get lost in the post, let's design our box. When designing a subwoofer box, there are two main methods. The first being sealed boxes where the air can't escape because, well, because it's sealed. And the second method, probably the most popular method, is ported boxes. Ported boxes have a tube or passage for the air to move in and out of the enclosure. Sealed boxes tend to be punchier and more precise, which is great for classical and jazz if that's what you're into. I, on the other hand, as most do, went for a ported design because if tuned right, it's louder at a given volume and able to hit lower. Since I wanted to keep some boot space compared to my first ever subwoofer build where me and my dad literally measured the boot and then went, yes, that. I opted for a ported design with two subs so I could pack a lot of power in just the back section of the boot. With that out of the way, I'll run through the key and basic factors in designing a ported box. I'll be posting my plans for free on my website, jcracoustics.co.uk, so don't worry if you're not looking to get into the depths of subwoofer design. With that said, we first need to establish the size of the box, or more specifically, the volume of air our box needs to contain. 
This is done by establishing the tuning frequency and designing the enclosure to work with the subwoofers to achieve this. Tuning frequency is the frequency at which your port is going to amplify or accentuate the bass note the most. It's also when the air moving through the port is greatest. A typical tuning frequency to design a subbox is about 33 Hz. Fortunately, most manufacturers actually give you this value which keeps it simple. You just make your box have a length, width and height which multiplies to get the given volume. If however you want to tune to a different frequency or the manufacturer doesn't provide these values, there is great free software like WinISD which will do it for you after you input the specs of your subwoofers. WinISD will also help you to establish the port length and size that you need as well as telling you important data like the max air velocity through the port. It's generally a good idea to ensure that this value is under 30 meters a second so that there's no audible chuffing from the port. With the needed volume now known, we make our box dimensions to achieve this volume or size. Now it's important to note that the volume doesn't account for the space taken up by the subwoofers or the port. And so remember to subtract those from your total volume of the box to get the working volume. I kept my design pretty simple and drew it out on paper, which is a fine way of doing it. However, this being JCR Acoustics, I then, for whatever reason, spent another two hours whacking it in CAD and messing with it until I got the dimensions exactly right to account for things like cables, which is, you know, absolutely pointless, but there we go, now you don't need to. As you can see, my design isn't very elaborate and is designed to be made with fairly simple tools so that if you're like me and you don't have a workshop, it's something that you can do at your kitchen table. The most complex part is this support brace which I used a Dremel to machine out along with the holes for the subs. Support braces are a good idea when you have subwoofers which are high powered and heavy, but they're not always needed. With that being said, and our parts now rescued from a mysterious warehouse, let's get to the build. So the key, as I said, was to make it as simple as possible so that you can build it on your kitchen table at home. So one of the best ways to go about this is to do sub assemblies using pilot holes and screws so you don't need access to any big expensive clamps. It's a good idea to spray down the port whilst you've still got it in a partly assembled state just so you can hit all the inside edges. You can see that I'd laid down silicone along all the edges before placing on the top and that just double ensures that the whole unit is sealed so no air can escape which will mess up your tuning frequency. You can see now I've put the top on again using screws and once I had it in place, I then hit those final edges I couldn't have done before with the silicone using my back camera on my phone so I could see what I was doing as it's a bit difficult to see all that inside. Just to show you how I've been doing the circular cutouts, it's quite a simple process and it doesn't use a much expensive kit. Just drill a pilot hole in the center and then once you've got that in place, you can bring your Dremel in a router bit, place it down to your correct measurement and then run it round before popping it out. And that's how I did the terminal speaker cup. The whole unit was already pretty smooth, but I hit it once with the orbital sander just to make sure everything was flush before I went on to carpet the whole box. Now I'm not gonna go into masses of detail on how to carpet a box because I literally watched a great YouTube tutorial already on how to do this. And then after seeing that, I went ahead and did it myself. So I've linked that one down in the description. So if you wanna go ahead and watch that, it gives a lot more detail and it's clearly a pro who's done it many more times. Whilst I was kind of worried about doing this for the first time, it actually turned out to be quite a nice and easy process. So you're just using a spray adhesive to lay down on the box and the key here is to make sure you're not putting any glue on the nice edge or the nice side of your carpet. So you can see I'm using cardboard and tape to avoid that. And then you cut after you've run your carpet over so you get a nice clean seam. So doing these edges was fairly easy and then you cut out and around the port. Where my box differentiates to most is I've actually recessed the second front baffle for the subwoofers. This is so they actually sit inside it and that means when it's in your boot, you're less likely to have luggage hit the subwoofers themselves and it also gives a cleaner look as far as I'm concerned. The hardest bit was doing the final side edges. Um, you have to do this kind of D-shaped seam which you cut out with a knife. Um, but as I said, even though it was the first time, you really have to look to find those seams and so following that tutorial was uh, definitely the way to go. You can see as well I'm lining the inside of the box using some thick cotton. 
This just helps with standing waves and also stops them resonating around the inside of the box. So you should get a cleaner sound and it can make it sound a bit deeper. I wasn't too happy with how the end of the port looked. Uh, it just looked a bit exposed. So I 3D printed that item there and then covered it off, which gave a much more professional look, which matched with the terminal cup. So this is what I was talking about with the recessed front baffle. The subwoofers sit inside on the second baffle at the back and that gives that nice clean look. You can see the Rockford Fosgate sort of surround there fitting in quite nicely and then finally getting the logo in place. All right, so we've got the speaker box finished, the all important logo in place. Now we just have to wire it in along with the amplifier and we're going to be good to go. So let's get to it. So on older cars like this, the head unit's not going to have a subwoofer out. So what we have to do is splice into the rear speaker cables, solder some more and run it to the boot where our amp sits to get our audio line. So I've already spliced into those cables and I've run them to the back. Unfortunately, there's a nice little convenient space where I've fitted our amplifier and that's where we wire in our sound and get that Please. so there's a channel called jag droid which show you how to fit bluetooth to your car in this module here now if you don't want to do it yourself it is a service they offer so you should check that out but what i've done is i've wired that all in and now i've connected to my car and i can get my bluetooth and my tunes going through the head unit Now the hardest part of any subwoofer install is getting the power cable through the firewall and into the boot. But I've got a few little tips that are going to show you how to do it. So you see this power cable here? I've got an 80 amp fuse fitted. You need to make sure that your fuse matches the amp and the subwoofers you're powering. But getting the cable through the firewall is a real pain. So last time my car was in the garage, I just asked them to do it for me and that's it. Job done. Thanks for watching. Now I'm going to leave you with questions. I'm sure you'll be asking if you put subs in an old car. So please like and subscribe. And for now, keep designing, keep making, and keep on creating. <laughs>